welcome to the Dream Big series. My name is Sibonja Graciela Ufoswa Himahineku, and today I'm here to interview Professor Kobna Frempon Boate. I was born in a village in the Shanti region. My parents are not living now. Um, my mom died about three years ago. She was a farmer and a trader. My father died many years ago, before I was born. Um, the first child and uh, my mom was pregnant and my father was traveling from Bibiani to Kumasi and he had a road traffic accident and died on the way. Uh, he was 24 years, and I'm told he had a shop, he trained as a, a tailor, he was a farmer as well. How was it like for you growing up? I grew up in a village, and uh, to me it was beautiful. Um, looking back, some people may say we were poor, uh, but we didn't notice that. We ate the food that was given to us and we enjoyed it. We manufactured our own toys. We enjoyed going to the well every morning to fetch water. We enjoyed playing football barefooted. We enjoyed going to school and playing around. And so growing up was uh, beautiful and we spent our lives in the village. It was rare for a child to travel 10 kilometers outside the village he was born those days. As a child, what did you dream about? And have any of those dreams led you here? When I was a child, I wanted to do well and become an engineer so I could take care of my mom who struggled uh, to pay my fees when I was in school. Uh, so I enjoyed mathematics, physics, and, and those subjects. But later on, I switched to medicine because um, I didn't see a good future for someone doing physics and mathematics and engineering in Ghana. And uh, that is why I switched to medicine. But I still, even now, I still enjoy engineering. Who is a cardiothoracic surgeon and what is exciting about this profession? A surgeon is a doctor who performs operations. And a cardiothoracic surgeon is one who operates on the heart, cardio, and thoracic refers to the chest. So a cardiothoracic surgeon is a doctor who operates on the heart and other structures in the chest. It's exciting because it's a relatively new field in medicine and it's very challenging to put somebody to sleep, open the chest, expose the heart, stop it, and let the machine do the functions of the heart and the lungs. Then you fix whatever thing is in there and then you close it up, allow the heart to beat again, and that is fascinating. It, it shows you the wonders of nature and of nature's God. Professor, you established the National Cardiothoracic Center and the Red Cross Society in Ghana. Could you please share with us what motivated you to set up these important institutions? Actually, let me correct you in that it is true I established the Ghana National Cardiothoracic Center and the Ghana Heart Foundation. I did not establish the Ghana Red Cross Society. It's been in existence for a very long time, but I was once president of the Ghana Red Cross Society. The Cardiothoracic Center, as you know, is a very important uh, institution. Uh, and uh, you might have heard that every year, hundreds of children are born who need heart surgery. There are adults also who need heart surgery or management of some heart condition. And before then, these children were taken outside for surgery. And as you know, we don't have the money to sponsor them outside. So only a few of them uh, could go. So the Cardio Strike Center is there, heart surgery has been established in Ghana so that we can manage these children who need heart operations. And there are many others who also need 
help at the cardiothoracic center. So it is very important. The Heart Foundation came in because we wanted to educate ourselves on disease of the heart and the circulation, how to prevent them, how to manage them, what to do uh, when you have some of these diseases. Also, we had to go into fundraising because, as I said, it's very expensive operating on the heart. And so we had to have an activity of the Heart Foundation that will look for money to sponsor patients, especially children who need heart surgery. That is why I had to go into that area or those areas. Professor, how important is the human heart and how can one take care of it? Taking care of the heart actually starts when the heart is in the womb. We advise mothers to be careful what they eat, the drugs that they take, because some drugs can affect the health of the mother and also affect the unborn baby. There are certain diseases uh, such as rubella or what we call German measles that can affect the mother in the first trimester, the first three months of pregnancy. It doesn't have any serious effect on the mother, but it can affect the heart of the child, can affect the brain, and also the joints. So, and the eyes. So a child can be born blind, can be born with mental retardation and uh, a defective heart. And that is why it's advised that a, a pregnant woman should be careful the drugs that she takes. Also, mothers should not drink alcohol when they are pregnant. That will affect the child. So these are the few things that a mother can do. Uh, but for example, the state can also immunize girls around the age of 12. In certain countries who that have the means, uh, girls around the age of 12 years are immunized against German measles so that when they grow up, they don't get German measles. And when we, are, when we come to the world, we should be careful what we eat. We should avoid uh, sugary drinks. We should avoid excessive salt. We must exercise and not eat too much so that we become overweight. If you are known to have hypertension, you have to take your drugs seriously because most of the times hypertension can be controlled. But if we take your drugs, it will not have effect on the heart. If you are diabetic, you have to take your drugs as well and be careful what you eat. Manage your health seriously. And then smoking too is very bad. There are certain countries where children, even at the age of six, eight, 10, start smoking. And I'm very happy that children in our country don't smoke that much. So smoking is very bad. And then alcohol is also not good for our health. So when we do these things, then uh, we can take care of our health. We should also avoid fatty foods, especially when we are growing up. And these are important things that we can all do. Children can do that and we can advise your parents when they are doing the wrong things, drinking, smoking, not exercising, and eating the wrong food, fatty foods, and so on. So these are a few things that one can do to protect the heart. And of course, when you are not well, one advice that we give to uh, parents is that when your child has a sore throat, it has to be treated seriously. We don't give uh, lozenges to soothe the pain because some of these sore throats are caused by germs that secrete certain poisons. And these poisons can have effects on the heart, on the joints, and the brain. And so this is a very serious problem, what we call rheumatic fever. So sore throat should be taken care of seriously. And when you have a heart problem, uh, see a doctor and don't try to self-medicate. It's very important. You were the CEO of the biggest hospital in Ghana. Whilst managing that, you were also opening and closing hearts and still found time to farm. How did you combine all these areas of work? No, the, it's about time management. Uh, and, and I always say that if you want something done, you give it to a busy person. You see, in this country, a few people do a lot of things just because uh, if you put your mind to it, you always find time to do it. And so, for example, you, you're in school. Apart from your lessons, there are a lot of things you can do. Maybe you can learn how to sew, you can learn how to play some musical instrument and do many things, the same person. And so it's about time management and how you uh, run up your attitude. 
If you want to do it, if you put your mind to it, you always find time to do it. What does it mean to be elected fellow of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Science? The Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences is an academy composed of eminent men and women who have excelled in their various fields in the sciences and the arts. And every now and then they look for people and then elect them to be members of the academy. And it's very important because the academy is also supposed to be a pace setter, giving direction, advice as to how the nation should develop in both the arts and the sciences, giving directions to school children, to universities, to industry, advising governments on how to uh, organize ourselves in, in the area of industries, in the arts, sciences, and in all aspects of our lives, in agriculture and so on, everything. So it's very important. And I'm a proud fellow of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. Please tell us what drives you. If you live in a country such as ours, where things are not as they should be all the time, something outside you should motivate you to do the things that you do. And I find out that the work I do is part of my service, my worship of God, my service to God and to human beings. So I don't think that going to church alone or going to the mosque alone is the way we worship God. But in the things that we do in our work, daily activities, what we do in the hospital, what we do in schools, what we do in the market, should be an expression of our service to God and to human beings. Whatever I'm doing, I see it as serving God and serving human being. And that is my motivation. And not so much as to what I'm going to get from it, financially or otherwise. How and where do you find inspiration? Following from what I just said, I find inspiration in the things of God. You know, look at nature and how things are organized. You know, uh, we, we read from the Bible that we are created in God's image. And so I try to find out what this image is. Of course, um, the image is not the real thing. And I don't look like God. Anatomically, I have nothing in common with him. But he has certain qualities, like love, hard work, discipline, holiness, that we are privileged to share. So the more you express these qualities, love, hard work, uh, being able to innovate, and so on. And changing things, you don't litter, and you are clean, you treat the environment with respect, treat your fellow man with respect. When you do all these things, then you express the nature or the image of God in you. And that is the motivation. What are the books you read and why? I read the Bible. I read the biographies of people. I read things on science, especially astronomy and astrophysics. I read things on agriculture, engineering, and of course medicine. So these are the areas that I, I, I engage in. Sometimes too, I read music. Who has influenced you the most? In my life, the, I told you earlier on that I didn't have a father who to guide me. Uh, but there are two people, my headmaster in the middle school, uh, called Mr. Auden, CEO Auden, he's now about 90 years. I mean, he really influenced me, guided me, uh, made sure that I didn't go astray. And so he was very important to me. And also, my boss in Germany, you know, he really gave me the chance to express what I could do. I mean, he saw something in me in surgery and so on. So he gave me the chance to do uh, the things that I, I can do. So apart from that, I admire uh, certain individuals, uh, some of them alive, some of them dead. A uh, person like Albert Einstein, uh, Johannes Kepler, 
And now I also admire Elon Musk, you know, the one uh, who bought this space vehicles, Falcon X and uh, Tesla Motors. He's a very special person. And of course, I should mention my wife, who has been also an inspiration and been a big help to me and my children. According to UNICEF, more than one in four children live in poverty. What are your thoughts about this? And what steps can we take to end child poverty in Ghana? Child poverty or poverty as a whole in Ghana is self-inflicted. It is not necessary. We should not be poor because potentially we have everything to make us live uh, comfort comfortable lives and take care of our children. And so it is up to us, the adults, to work hard and uh, not engage in unwholesome acts. You know, we have to devise a good education system so that our children can go to school. We have to work hard so that we can feed them. We have to lead lives that they can emulate. They can, we can be a good example to them, good role models to our children so that they will not be wayward and so on. Then we should also learn to sacrifice. I remember my mom would, would go hungry and work very hard so she could pay my, my school fees. And I think that is what we can do so that our children uh, will lead good lives. And above all, we should build hospitals for them so that children will not uh, die unnecessarily you know, from disease that should not kill them. So there are a few things that we have to do. Education system, our health system, provide water for them so children will not go to the riverside like I was doing, sometimes to be bitten by snakes and so on. So there are a few things that we have to do. Work hard, create wealth, so our children and those that will come after them will enjoy. Please, which schools did you attend? I started school in a village called Jankoba in the Atuma Mwabiaja district, the Shanta region. The primary school from class one to class six. It was a Roman Catholic school. From there, my auntie took me to Accra, brought me to Accra, and I started middle school here at the Bishop's Boys Middle School at Bubuyashi for two years. And I had to go back to the village to continue the middle school. And from there, I passed the common entrance and went to Sekandi College in Sekandi. I think it's the best school in Ghana. Uh, from there, I went to the University of Ghana to do a pre-science course. And following that, subsequently, I entered medical school. Uh, and so. I did my basic medicine here, qualified as a doctor at the University of Ghana Medical School. And after that, I did my housemanship in Kolebu, then continued as a medical officer in Kumasi, Konfonochi Hospital. There, I was a demonstrator in anatomy. You know, that was the time that they established the School of Medical Sciences in, at the University of Science and Technology. So I was a demonstrator in anatomy. Um, with the students demonstrating, you know, we are the mortuary dissecting bodies, so we, we teach anatomy. And then from there, I left to Germany to do my postgraduate. So in Germany, I completed the course in general surgery, and after that, I did vascular surgery, that is blood vessel surgery, and did thoracic surgery, and then heart surgery. And so if you put all that together, you will become a general surgeon and also a cardiothoracic specialist. Apart from medicine, what other things do you do? Uh, there are many things that a person can do in life. I like farming. I cultivate foodstuffs. I breed ostriches. You know, these this big bears, you know. And I also cultivate jetrofa. Jetrofa is a seed bearing plant. And when you have the seeds, you can express the oil and then process the oil into biodiesel. So we can get a biodiesel to run any vehicle. And we used to have a factory that used to 
um, manufacture spare parts, what we call a machine tool center. So I believe that Ghana should be able to manufacture machines. You know, if, if we want to develop, we need to train people so they can manufacture machine parts. So we'll be able to build our water pumps, transformers, so we don't have problems with water, electricity, and so on. So these are some of the things that I do, and I enjoy them. Professor, please tell us a story. Uh, let me take you back many, many years ago when I was in class five or so. We had a teacher called Mr. Esampong. He was teaching us. He was a people teacher, but a very good one. Uh, people teachers were those who completed Form 4 and they came to teach in the primary school. One day he told us a story. He says, look, I'm a people teacher and I'm teaching now. But the time is coming when if you are not a graduate, you will not be able to sell stamps at the post office. You will not be able to work at the post office if you are not a graduate. And that was many, many, many years ago. So I thought about that. And I said, well, then life is going to be tough. If you have to become a graduate to work at the post office, then I must work hard. And that thing was made a massive imprint on me. And uh, it motivated me to study hard you know, uh, in secondary school and then the university. So I think that that story made an impression on me. Professor, thank you for having us today and thank you for granting me this opportunity to come and interview you. Simoja, I thank you very much for coming and I wish you well in your education. Thank you. <laughs>